Today we're going to work on a slightly different problem that photographers and cinematographers run into all the time, and that is having light sources that have a green magenta shift. Now you can see outdoors, I've got beautiful green scenery, and there's where I've got a lot of green light coming in. And it turns out, to see in a minute, the strobe that I want to use to put the fill flash in on the subject's left side is magenta. And yeah, I'll show you how to use the Illuminati meter to fix all that. Let me set the scene here for you. We've got our, our subject here. And I've got my meter here. Right now it's facing out. But there it is. It's in monitor ambient mode. Every time it flashes, it's sending a signal back to my phone. I'll show you the phone in a second. And uh, the other part of this, right, is my phone down here and my trusty set of Roscoe gel correction filters. So gives you a bunch of different correction filters. Look for that in your uh, local photo store. Um, very useful for um, fixing the color of various light sources. With the Illuminati meter pointing out the window, I can meter the amount of light that's falling on the right side of our model's face. And right now I'm reading about ISO 800, f6.3 at 1 160th of a second. I already chose a shutter speed based on getting a shutter sync with my flash. And let's look at the color temperature. And you'll see that we've got uh, somewhere around 5,500, a little over 5,500 Kelvin. Um, it's bouncing around a little bit based on the cloud cover. As it gets thicker, the color temperature goes up. As it thins out and we see more sun, the color temperature goes down. Uh, right now, I've got uh, also a DUV shift. What is DUV? That measures your magenta green shift. A positive shift indicates, as you can see from the graph here, indicates that the light source is slightly green, as we would expect, because we've got so much green outside. We've got the lawn, we've got the tree leaves and everything. So I've got to make sure that my fill light that's going to fall on the left side of the model's face is going to match that or get, or get pretty close. You don't have to be exact with this because there's some amount of that green is going to look natural in the image. So when the meter reports a positive DUV number, you've got a green shift in your light. And when it reports a negative DUV number, you've got a magenta shift in your light. Now we're going to characterize the flash that I'm going to use for the fill. First, I want to know what the color temperature is and if there is any DUV shift. So we're going to go measure that. Put the meter into the flash metering mode. And there it is right there. Click on that. And now the meter is in flash metering mode. And in fact, it shows you that by turning color, it, it gives you a little bit of a cyan, green, purple kind of a uh, sh uh, shift in the LEDs so that you can see that it's in that mode. And next thing we'll do is, this is just for the color temperature, is I'm going to fire the flash. Boom. And it gives us a color temperature of about 5,900 Kelvin and a DUV of about minus 0.007. And you can see from the display, now I've got two light sources. One is uh, uh, coming in magenta and the other one is coming in green. It's not exactly the same uh, number as before. This, is, uh, this one is the reading you get when you fire the, the strobe. And so that's what it's reading, pointing at the light. OK, so now we've got the color temperature and the DUV shift for our strobe. Here's that data. We can now take the meter out of flash metering mode and go back and check. It'll keep this setting for us. We'll go back and check the color temperature outside. I'm just going to move this over here. 
and they're pretty closely matched, except what you can see is the DUV numbers are widely divergent, right? So DUV plus 012 is green and our flash is magenta. So we need to correct that. And that correction is relatively easy to do using the uh, color filter interface we can put in the uh, Roscoe gels for correcting fluorescence because that's what they were built for and I'm going to need some green so I'm going to put in a quarter green and a half a green and see how, how well these correct I'm also going to tell it which one I want to correct either the ambient or the strobe I choose the strobe of course because that's what we're correcting um, and the filtered light type we got to set that it helps the graph be more accurate basically that's the quick summary of it so we'll put it down here on xenon strobe and now when we look at this we see that a 3316 gets us some correction but a 3315 gives us the best correction that is a plus half green uh, filter on the Roscoe settings so we're gonna go take that out of our kit and we're gonna go put that into the light so thanks to the magic of video I've already pulled out the 3315 and I've got it ready to go I keep a little clothespin handy to make it easy to um, connect, uh, attach this inside of the strobe I'll show you that in a second. And now the final step is going to be to set the exposure. So we'll go to the exposure tab here and we've got ISO 800 f6.3 coming in through the window at a 160th of a second. I'm going to turn on the flash metering mode and I'm going to turn the meter around. And get a flash reading. So that shows me I've got F14 and uh, so we don't want that. We want it to match something a little bit closer, maybe a little bit less light than what is coming in from the outside. So I'm going to move this, uh, this strobe back, way back, to give me about F5, 6, something like that, maybe F4. Okay, now I've moved the strobe back and it's time to check the exposure. Let's see if I need to adjust that at the distance anymore. And we fire, and about f6.3, that might be a little more light than I want. I'm gonna push it back just slightly. I'll just push the light back a little bit more and take another reading. 2.2, maybe too far. Five, six. I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave it at that.